Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Game Junk Podcast, episode 190, recording on Sunday, April 28th, 2024. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And it's just the two of us tonight, Sean. Huck is away on vacation, and we're going to talk about just some major new releases, including Another Crab's Treasure, mm-hmm. Stellar Blade, and Tales of Kinzara Zhao. All released this week. I've played them all. Sean's played two of the three. And I think they're all really good. So we're going to give our impressions on uh, each of those games. Anything else going on, Sean? Anything major in the gaming world we need to speak of? Not really. We were just talking before the show. Is it a slow year? There's some disagreement over that. I think it's a bit slow. Frank thinks great year for gaming. So. I think it is so far. I forgot. I said before the show, there's three exclusives for PlayStation that are really good. And then I forgot there's a fourth. That's good. Rise of the Ronin. Final Fantasy Rebirth. Helldivers 2. Stellar Blade, which I'm loving so far. And that's not even getting into the uh, the game of the year so far. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. It's. I know it didn't look like it was going to be a good year, but so far I am very happy. If you're not happy, you're probably Team Xbox or Nintendo or something like that, because there's too many (laughs) games for me to play right now. It's out of control. Yeah, I think what I was trying to say is it's very slow, particularly in terms of doing a podcast and having things to talk about. And uh, and I just, you know, looking ahead to the second half of the year, there's got to be some big announcements coming for Summer Game Fest. But, you know, we'll see. If you're putting all of your hopes and dreams on a summer game fest, <laughs> well, not summer dude. game fest specifically, but you know, people do their own showcases around that time. So and we're just waiting for that switch to domino to fall and we'll see where it goes. So yeah, uh, let's get into what we played and we're going to start with another crab's treasure because Sean hasn't played stellar blade. I've put over 20 hours into stellar blade already. Uh, But while I was waiting to play Stellar Blade, I fired up another Crab's Treasure for a few hours. And I'm playing on PlayStation. Sean, you're playing on Game Pass? Yes, playing on Xbox. It is a Souls-like, kind of not casual, but uh, a lighter spirited Souls-like where you play as a crab, where you get new shells with defensive abilities. And it's, you know, a smaller scale, like a double A type Souls-like. And, uh... What did you think of another crab's treasure thus far? Yeah, I was I was enjoying it. I mean, obviously not a souls like fan as we know. <laughs> and uh this one I just I do like that it's um yeah, it's a little bit humorous, it's a little bit colorful. It's just, you know, so many of the souls like games just, you know, as much as I like the the art design and creature design of the from software games, they just, they're all so dark, you know, obviously like that's a big part of those games and just, it's refreshing to have something that's, you know, this cartoony character that's underwater. The music is kind of this light sort of, uh, I don't know, Caribbean kind of beach chill kind of music. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't have the same, uh intensity which which i like (laughs) um but you know that's not to say it's not uh like it definitely has a lot of the hallmarks of souls like games and some of them were a bit frustrating but uh you know difficulty so far you know i would say it's not as crushing (laughs) as some of those games uh it definitely you know maybe the thing that bugged me the most was just the the map is not that useful. It's kind of, I, I found myself getting lost and, and disoriented quite a bit. Um, but, you know, got past the, the first main boss, got to the, got the grappling hook, which kind of added some fun to the, uh, just moving through the world. And I was enjoying it. Yeah. I think what I like about it is it is capturing the feeling of a souls like better than other attempts, at least what I've played it from software games that it's not really pointing you in a direction all the time. I ended up exploring a lot and discovering things on my own, 
I mean, I can take or leave that aspect, but I think they've actually managed to capture that idea in a smaller environment where I'm kind of discovering on my own and not being told where to go. A lot of other modern souls likes are just, just taking the idea of death and reclaiming your elements. And that's the part it brings, not the feel of a From Software game. So it feels like a casual From Software. And in the sense of that, simplifying economies. You know, there's four stats you can invest in basically, and they're pretty understandable. I just like reducing games down to just core ideas and economies and not overcomplicating things. So I'm really enjoying that as like a smaller, more accessible version of a souls like, although it does suffer in other ways. I do find the environment to be a little repetitive and I agree. I would get lost just just in terms of the environment design and assets, seeing the same things over and over again, repeated enemies quite often, you know, I'm still in the starting area. It's just got like these invisible walls to stop you from exploring, which uh, is, you know, not, not the greatest, but I'd prefer that than to getting lost everywhere. I wish they had a more clever idea for locking you out of the entire world, but I, I am finding, I don't know what to do next. I've hit a spot where I'm like, I'm supposed to go get something for this uh, queen or what is it? The Duchess, I Duchess? think. Yeah, the duchy, the Duchess of the duchy. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I m missed a direction or something when she was talking. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like aimlessly exploring <laughs> to find this thing, which is fine. Like I'm getting better at the combat. I'm leveling up, but... I feel like I'm spinning my legs as a crab would a little bit here. Yeah. That's like, I kind of, I just, I guess figured or found that the path I think I'm supposed to be taking. Uh, but I'm basically around the same point. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I do like the world. Like, I, I, I don't know so, something about games where, uh, you know, you're playing a character that's smaller and you have real world objects in the environment. So you've got like pop cans on the bottom of the sea and you've got, um, you're fighting with like, uh, what is it? A fork? Uh, I, I don't know. Just, and the idea that your shell. So like the story is your shell was stolen from you. And as you go through the game, there's different objects you can find to use as a shell, uh, but they, take damage over time so you kind of have to keep swapping them out and different uh different shells have different uh stats and stuff like that so i, I kind of like that aspect That's into cool. a hermit crab uh, i don't know if this is, is is it established in the game that it is a hermit crab i don't visually mm -hmm. i don't think it's a hermit crab but obviously boring yeah, here. in the in the game description it says hermit crab it does okay uh i love the menus like the typeface, uh, colors, all the presentation elements, I think are fantastic. The intro story and dialogue for this type of game, I thought was pretty effective, mild Nintendo vibes and like in terms of humor and writing. Uh, so I I'm down with all that stuff. Gameplay is good. I wouldn't say it's great in terms of timing and dodges, even the simple early minnow enemies, like the tells are not, super obvious and I can kind of rotate around enemies at times and just get them caught in a pathfinding loop. And you know, it's which I don't even mind because I I'm just kind of sick of fighting some of the enemies sometimes, which I know it doesn't sound like the best thing so far, but I am still really enjoying the game. Uh, I did put it aside to play stellar blade, but I, part of me that day was like, should I just play this game until it's done and then go to stellar blade? So I, I definitely wanted to keep playing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long the game is. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's a bit of a shorter game, but it seems, I think I read somewhere that it, like sales have been really strong, like for like the initial few days, I guess. Uh, so that's that's cool to see. How um, long to beat has it around 13 hours? Currently. Oh, okay. That's a little longer than I expected, actually. But yeah, I mean, I... I I don't know. Like I, I, I'm right now. I'm I'm going to keep playing it, but I do have a few other things I want to get through first. So uh, we'll see what happens. But but yeah, I mean, definitely if you're into Souls likes and you're and you're looking for something a little different, I would I would check it out. I, I agree with you that the combat. 
I mean, again, I, I'm not like a huge player of these types of games, so I don't know if it's just, you know, I just don't like those, the, you know, the the types of combat that you generally have, but there is something about, like, I feel like there's a little bit of a delay when you attack before you actually kind of like lunge forward and do your attack and you kind of, if you tap the button a few too many times, you get locked into that. I think that's kind of a Souls-like thing, but I, I don't love that. Well, this is my other huge problem. And, you know, talking about Stellar Blade as well. And to some degree, uh, other games I've been playing recently, and I know Blake on the Discord says the Soulsification of games has been the worst thing to ever happen to him. Uh, I, I love Souls likes in general, but the worst thing that has happened to me is Souls likes having different controls. Like some use square and triangle, some use R1 and R2. So, yeah. I have to commit to one. If they all just picked a unified kind of control scheme, it's it's always heavy light attack and block. Can we not agree on something that works or two standards that you in your options you pick between so that I can play multiple souls likes at the same time and I don't my brain doesn't break and I'm not at a disadvantage for doing that. Like how have we not established this yet? Uh it's exactly so I when I was playing Stellar Blade, I would start hitting R1 and I'm like, oh, that's right. I have to hit square for this game. And so there's zero incentive for me to switch from one to the other. I, I like, I have to finish this game out where if they all had a, a, a similar standard control setup, I would bounce back and forth and probably enjoy it more. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I'm assuming some of these games let you remap controls. Like that always seems to be a thing we complain about. And then we just, we're not even looking for that option, but yeah, it's annoying. Even if it does offer that, that you would have to go in and customize. It's tough everything. though, because there's usually one little thing that's off and it's usually relating to sprint or dodge. And then it throws off everything because yeah. some other, something is mapped more than once to one button, whether it's a press or a hold. And then to put that on a, a trigger gets really annoying and it, it's always a mess. Just figure yeah. this. This should not be this hard to figure out. Yeah, but I I do like the game quite a bit, and it's definitely if you're into Souls likes, worth checking out for sure. It's got a nice level of difficulty, uh, kind of fun idea, and a nice kind of like change up for a Souls like. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I put another Crab's Treasure away, fired up Stellar Blade uh, shortly after midnight on its release night, replayed the demo. I, I could have used my save progress and continued right where I was. I was like, I don't remember everything. So I'm just going to start from scratch again. And I kind of loving Stellar Blade. It is not perfect. There are platforming issues. Anything, there's a few times where you have to do pl precision platforming, grabbing onto ropes and hitting specific ledges and jumps. Kind of like Sekiro originally, like that stuff is brutal. And I just get so angry whenever I have to do precision jumping in this game. But the combat, I love. And it's very similar to Sekiro. Someone on the Discord posted an article about like delays. Oh, this reminds me of the other thing that got me on the tangent with inconsistencies between Souls likes and having to commit to one. You know, in another Crab's Treasure, a lot of Souls likes, you hit the button once to do an attack. And if you hold it, it'll do something else. And this one, there's a hold attack, but you have to release and then hold again. And sometimes I feel like I thought I did that and I didn't. And like getting used to the, the nuances and subtleties of the control schemes going back and forth is annoying. I mean, it's not a, it's neither game's fault. They're, they're the games that they are, but it's just, it sucks if you want to play more than one at the same time. But Stellar Blade feels a lot like Sekiro for the most part, a lot of parrying and timing and there's skill trees to make those windows more achievable and less frustrating. And when it's working well, I feel like I'm hitting that flow that I loved in Sekiro and just crushing enemies. The, the powers are very satisfying. It's got its equivalent of the Makiri counter and some things that are close to it. Still, I wouldn't say it's as good as Sekiro, but it also adds some ranged weapons that I think are pretty fun and intriguing. 
even more inspired by Nier Automata than I thought. Like it's very similar in terms of getting things in weird orders, side quest structure from what I've seen from trophy guides, getting locked out of areas. And if it, it doesn't have the ending thing to the same degree as Nier Automata, but other than that, it feels very similar. Uh, the world, the scanning, just not similar in like a gross way, but it kind of in a good way. And I, I've just, I don't know what it is about it. It's certainly not a perfect game. It's probably like an eight, 8.5 for most people, but I just want to keep playing it. I, I'm just exploring the open worlds and I'm not sick of combat at all. It's got, for me, it's the sweet spot of difficulty for a game like this. I think that's why I like it so much. It's not too hard when I die. I nine out of 10 times feel like it's my fault. Like my timing was off and I did something wrong. I don't get stuck on anything for too long and it's just uh very satisfying. So it's definitely, I'm going to finish it for sure. I, I'm going to stick with this until it's done this week. I'm pretty sure. And uh, I don't know. Pleasant surprise. I knew I liked it from the demo. I think I like it even more upon playing it. Nice. And it's just, you were talking about difficulty that reminded me of something else with another crab's treasure. And actually, I don't know if stellar blade has something similar, but the, if you go into the settings, it actually has like a whole bunch of different difficulty, not just like difficulty levels, but like all these very granular tweaks to like uh, combat and stuff to sort of make things more uh, accessible. If you do find it too difficult, which I mean, there, there's starting to be some of these games that are Souls-like, uh, whether they're like, you know, full-on Souls-type games or just taking some of those elements, but they're starting to add things to scale down the difficulty for people who are frustrated. Because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Like, I think, you know, something like Tunic, a lot of people thought they were getting a Zelda game and they just got destroyed right off the bat and, and just never went back to it. So it's like, they're adding these options, which is good, but I still feel very conflicted over it. Like, I don't, I don't know if I would ever use them. Like I've said to myself, oh, I should go back and try tunic again with a couple of things tweaked, but I just don't do it. Cause I feel like I'm not playing the game, you know, like it's such a weird, like I, I'm actually curious, like, you know, to listeners out there, people like, I feel like we have a fair amount of more like hardcore gamers who just wouldn't even consider that, but there's gotta be some people in the middle that are like, oh yeah, actually I do try those out and they do. And I still enjoy the game and it's fine. So I, I don't know. I'm curious how many people use things like that. Yeah. You'd think I'd be tempted to, because it usually makes trophy hunting a lot easier, but I'm with you. I want to play the game basically as it was intended to be played. Except that reminds me, I do owe an apology to Huck. I don't know if he's listening out there, wherever he is, but uh, I was ragging on him for using the uh, the hint in the Stellar oh, right. demo. <laughs> and there are cases in this game where it's basically some passcode that's in a document that you just have to look up and memorize again. And I'm using hints for that. It, I, I do not need to take two minutes to open up a menu and memorize six characters and re-enter them. I don't use I mean, it, it for like actual puzzles that it's a puzzle, but if it's just memorizing six things, I'm not going to hold it in my head. I just have no, I can go to a menu and read. I, <laughs> this is not a gaming challenge at all. Yeah. Like, so that is like, I don't even really know why they call it a hint. To me, that's not really a hint. Well, it's because there's other things that are kind of a puzzle where it's like a math thing and you're trying to figure out a oh, okay. passcode based on clues. So I think it just is like a be all solution for all of those things. So, you know, once you know which ones are which, I'm okay with using it in those scenarios. Right. And a few other like nitpicks, but pretty frustrating skipping dialogue. There's like a delay as to how, when you can go to the next line of dialogue. And it, I'm just trying to get through these really laborious 
uh, NPC dialogue moments. And then even to get into a store, you have to talk to the same character over and over again and trying to just get to what you want to do is super frustrating. So I don't know how that makes it into a game like this. It does feel like, well, that's, we want to be a little different. We want this game to be a little weird. So it's just the way it is, which I mean, it's your call, but it's definitely annoying and it's adding a lot of friction. So in my opinion, lots of small things that could be smoothed out in this game, but in general, combat is tight and it is fun and that's all i really care about so i uh i'm really liking it and would you say this has hooked you more than like say rise of the ronin or definitely more than rise of the ronin yeah just i mean rise of the ronin is so similar if i hadn't played neo games maybe i would be more into rise of the ronin or ghost of tsushima or sekiro it just feels very similar to stuff i've done even though i like it and the story and characters in rise of the Ronin is and voice acting is like not great. So it's more of a comfortable open world experience than anything groundbreaking. A lot of people are saying stellar blade is like an old PS two or PS three game. I don't think I did. I agree with that at all. It feels like a lot like near automata. It, it, it's just a little different. It doesn't feel like an old game to me. I, I, I don't understand that at all. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there is like a slight feel of that, but I, I don't, I can't put my finger on why. Like, I, maybe it's just the, the aesthetic. Like, I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of sci fi kind of hype games like that from that era, but I, I think it's just that there are some open areas and some more linear ones. Uh, and, but I mean, Near Automata had that too. I, it, it's, it's fine to me. If you're, I think the major criticism would probably be it's too similar for some people, but where it's, it's similar in vibe, I don't think it's similar in gameplay at all. And I think they both have their merits when it comes to gameplay. Cool. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm really enjoying it. All right. The next game we're going to talk about also came out this week. Tales of Kenzera Zao which is uh, on PlayStation Plus uh, Premium, right? Yeah, or Extra. Or one extra, of those, whatever right? it's called. Yeah, I get them yeah. all mixed up. Is it on uh, Game Pass? It's not on Game Pass. It's an EA Originals game. And when we saw this before, it looks so similar to Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Like art style, effects, gameplay. Mm-hmm like very similar. And I, I kind of felt bad because like, that's an $80 <laughs> Ubisoft super big budget game. And then this game has to like come out later and try to live up to that. And so I was like, kind of worried, like, how am I going to go from that game to this? But I was, thought it was awesome and had its own unique combat systems. And compared to other Metroid likes that I've played in recent memory, the controls are pretty tight and i like the combat quite a bit so i have more thoughts but what did you think of this game yeah i liked it quite a bit like i i had played the demo a couple months ago so i kind of had the general kind of the, like the main thing that's interesting about the combat is there's two masks you switch between i don't know if you get more masks later but so far there's only two and yeah uh, there was a xbox live arcade title that had a similar idea I think by Housemark Outland. Oh yeah, right. I, 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 I don't know if it's exactly the same, but I'm wondering if it I went was, back to that game, if it had some similar ideas. It was that game. I think it was more, it was like color coded, right? Like you had to switch between two different colors and that kind of. But well, that's fact. what this is too. You switch between like. Yeah, fire. It, it is two different colors, like, you know, opposites, like it's like water or ice and fire. But the thing that's different also is that one is more melee based and the other is kind of ranged. So it's kind of cool. You have to kind of switch between them depending on what enemies you're fighting. And uh, it, it kind of gives a nice variety to the flow of the combat and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I can see a lot of potential for powers and skill tree stuff when you switch between them and motivating switching between them and where that's going to go. So yeah. 
I find the shooting combat actually really satisfying. When I first got it, I just started hitting the square button. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a bit like Ori, long range Ori, which people had issues with that game's the first game's combat, but I liked it. And then once you realize you can like focus aim with left trigger, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm I'm digging this quite a bit. So, and I, I the voice acting is quite good mm-hmm. <laughs> compared to some of the stuff I've been playing lately. Like it's it's solid for an indie title. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, like it's, it is on a surface level, there's definitely similarities to Prince of Persia, but, um, but it's got this whole like African mythology thing going on. And it's kind of like, I think kind of drawing from Afro futurism. So it, it just has a unique feel to it in terms of the art style and the story and all of that, which I was enjoying. And yeah, I mean, I, I do think if, Prince of Persia hadn't just come out a few months ago, I probably would have been even more excited about this, but I'm still really enjoying it. And I think, I, I can't remember what I, what it was on Metacritic, but I feel like it was in the 70s. I was like, oh, that's kind of surprising. Like, I don't know if people are, maybe it gets really repetitive later on or or what, but I was kind of surprised by that. Yeah, I was too, actually. I think I saw some Metacritics and when I fired it up, I'm like, this is way better than what people are saying about it so far. Who knows where the game ends up? Yeah. Especially with lower budget games. The beginning is usually always better than the end or any game really for that matter. So it's, yeah. it's starting off really strong. And I know I'm repeating myself here, but I wanted to kind of just finish this game because it's shorter. Just keep playing it. So I was like, just loving life this weekend. All three <laughs> games. I, I just want to play all three of them. And then saw the best movie i've seen in such a long time challengers oh god it's good and i am just high on art and life this weekend it's it's the greatest frankie 3.0 i think new frank 3.0 is here (laughs) and it all started with civil war (laughs) yeah that movie is just everything just seems to be great since that moment I, i do find i have well, what's going to kill New Frank 3.0? Mm. Baywatch killed New Frank 1.0. Maybe if. Oh, that's a good I mean, guess. Unless you veto it, but. <laughs> Be- you mean it's going to be a review? I mean, how can it not? Did you watch the, did that Charlie Kaufman animated movie come out on Netflix? Uh, Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched it yet. Keep forgetting to Orion in the dark. I've heard some good things about it. I don't know. I was waiting to watch it with the kids and then they just didn't have any interest in it. All right. Well, this isn't film junk. This is game junk. It's my fault. I admit it. I I brought up challengers had to bring it up. Best score. Oh, so good. Listen to it all weekend. Um, I, I think I've just played those main three games, except for one other thing. Anything you've played, Sean? So, yeah, I got a couple vr things to mention so we actually we got a second meta quest 2 you're not going to be happy to hear that i'm sure but uh, not because it would have sold you mine but a huge discount well it was the kids really wanted to play uh gorilla tag together i don't know if you're aware of gorilla tag i have an extra VR quest game. here that's not being used i have a quest three i have my old quest I, two. I it was like kind of a last minute easter gift idea because there was a huge price cut on it and we just did it but so anyway we've been doing some co-op vr stuff and there's a game on quest i think it's on the app lab still um which apparently they're getting rid of the app lab thing which is probably for the best, but um, it's called Rooms of Realities. I don't even know what the app lab is. Oh, it's like their early access thing, but it's weird because you can search for a game and it won't show in the main results and you got to kind of scroll down and it'll be under app lab. So it's like, I think a lot of that stuff gets missed by people. But uh, well, actually, so two games that are very similar, two escape room related VR games I'll mention. So Rooms of Realities is the one and it's it's quite good. Like it's um, I, I think there's only maybe four uh, st- stories or sections and each has like three chapters to it uh, with different themes. But it's 
you know, you actually are, you know, maneuvering things in the world and like manipulating stuff. And so it's like, you have to work together with the other person and, and it feels like you're actually doing something. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. And then there's escape simulator, which had already been out on steam. They put out a VR update. So like, if you already own the game, you get the VR version for free, which is kind of cool. Um, and that game is interesting because it's like you can create your own escape room. So it's like there's a lot of community levels and content out there. But it's not as fun in, in VR because it still feels like the, the 2D version of the game where you just kind of click on stuff. So it's not like you're, you're not really reaching out and manipulating stuff all that much. Uh, so I don't know. I wasn't having as much fun with that one. But I mean, it's cool that it's a free update i guess but uh yeah if you're into escape rooms and you have vr rooms of realities and escape simulator vr check them out so you need two more oculuses then right you need the whole family under the visor <laughs> yeah maybe we'll uh, buy a third from you there frank <laughs> <laughs> gotta just everyone in the i can just picture the whole family in the living room just all <laughs> <laughs> their visor on oh the yeah we have the future is here today uh i will just mention i have to get back to this because there's only one day left on this playstation Sh stars challenge uh i finally fired up foam stars did you ever mm. try this i did not i downloaded it did not fire it up this is the square enix ripoff of splatoon a kind of kids or casual all audiences friendly shooter where instead of shooting paint, you are shooting foam, like a foam party and covering the level. And I actually really like the main mechanics, like shooting the foam feels good. The different characters, I've only experimented with like four or five. They all have some interesting ideas. And I generally like the game so far. Uh, it's way better than I thought it would be. But the matches themselves, especially first for first time players, they are so chaotic. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I feel like I'm hitting people and nothing's happening, but I'm getting owned constantly. So it just feels like some balancing issues where, especially for new players, I could see how if you tried this game out, you'd be like, ah, this is not fun. I'm just getting ruined. <laughs> and I I'm, don't even think I'm doing anything bad. I'm just trying to play and it's almost like I'm not learning anything while I'm playing. So, and you can, especially you start with a, like a first character. And then once someone picks that character, you can't use them. So I practice with this character, then went to a game, someone else picked my character and I'm like, I get some new character that I don't know what they're doing. And <laughs> I, okay, I guess oh, I'll try man. this, but has some potential. It's, it's, it's not bad, but uh, yeah, I, don't know how well it's doing. I assume not too well, but definitely worth a look, worth a poke. I, I, so I like people enjoy it. Like, what's the main like? Like, is it like Splatoon where it's kind of territory based or it's like all what? different? So it's there's different versions of just deathmatch. You cover someone in foam and then you have to kick them uh, with kind of like your surfboard. And you can only surf in your own color foam quickly. Okay. So it's, it's, that's in Splatoon as well. So it, it's got a lot of shared ideas, but their own little twist on it. And the big difference is the foam has some 3D properties or vertical properties, I should say. So it can build on top and some powers give you like hills of foam rather than just everything being flat and covering surfaces. Hmm. So it's not completely devoid of its own ideas it's i would say it's just a partial ripoff but definitely missing some of the charm of splatoon although i like the character designs in general it just it feels a little half-baked so i i think there is a potential good game in there i just don't know if they're gonna have the audience time and budget to figure out what it is hmm. yeah i mean seems like it is free with PlayStation Plus, right? Uh, I don't know. I think it is. I thought it was a PlayStation Plus game a few months ago, but I could be wrong. Yeah, could be know. both. 
I, well, I, I know I didn't pay for it, so it must have been at one point, but, uh, but yeah, the like monthly it, game, not the subscription version. I right, thought, okay. Yeah. I think you maybe right. don't quote me, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, you need stuff like that in order to build a bit of a uh, player base, I think. And it's, it's very similar feelings I had with, uh, that headbangers rhythm Royale game where it's good. It's got potential. Just no one's really playing it. I mean, to match make took me three minutes to find a match and I'm only doing it to get these this PlayStation stars challenge, which I might just abandon. Actually, I'm getting a little sick of waiting to not get into a match. Hmm. It's interesting. Like thinking about hell divers too, and how that caught on so much and I don't totally know why. Like, I it's a it's a really fun game, but like I feel like there's other elements at play that I don't totally understand what about that game. I think on. the biggest aspect of that was there was a pretty I wouldn't say solid but uh, existing fan base for Hell Divers One that I was not aware of. I think more yeah, that's true. really liked Hell Divers One than I was aware of, and they they had a community. And that that kind of grew on PC, I think, even more than PlayStation. It was it was a bigger deal on Steam than on PS4 or whatever it, it launched on. So uh, I think they had that. And then definitely, as we had said before, they were force feeding you this game pretty hard. You're gonna like Hell Divers too. Uh, and despite our pushback, it worked, and it worked <laughs> because the game turned out to be amazing. And we played some more last night. I'm still playing every day. And I still love it. It's It would be tough. The more I play it, the more I have to concede it might be my game of the year. It might be better than Prince of Persia. It's neck and neck at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, it's going to be on a lot of lists at the end of the year. No question. So I think it's going to win the game award for game of the year. Could happen. I mean, again, I don't know what's coming out of the second half of this year, but it could definitely happen. It just feels like what we always talk about doing something new, like well-designed kind of captures everyone's attention. It just, it, I, I think it's going to, can I bet on this yet? Can I bet on a game of the year yet? I kind of <laughs> want to bet on Helldivers too. You so. might have to uh, start, you might have to become the bookie for that one. I don't know. Unless the Silk Song, will it drop this year? And will Hades 2 potentially drop this year? Yeah, I don't know. But even a sequel, although Helldivers 2 is a sequel, it's a very different sequel. I don't think Hades 2 would win Game of the Year, but I think Silk Song could because people just have insane love for Hollow Knight, which is just the way you're perplexed by Helldivers being so popular. I feel that way about Hollow Knight. I like it. It just like it's the most beloved game ever, and that's all people want is another Hollow Knight. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's good, but there's equally good Metroid likes out there, if not better uh, ones. Yeah, I mean, believe me, I kind of feel that way too. But it's, I mean, that was the game that really started the Souls like thing seeping into all these other genres. I think because uh, when I came out, I really didn't know had not played any dark souls games and there was just so many elements of the game that I found frustrating. I was like, what is the deal with this? And then that's like, Oh, this is a whole genre now, but yeah. And I really, I'm going to mention one more game very quickly. I haven't played it that much, but every couple of weeks I fired up again. I really like F zero 99, the battle Royale F zero on the switch. Yeah. It's pretty fun. My only criticism is, I feel like if you don't win in the first couple of laps, you don't have a chance because it's so short. It's four laps and they fly by. Uh, but it's it's really good. Hmm. Yeah, I got to try that one of these days. All right. I think that's it, Sean. Do you have anything else you played? I mean, lots of little things. Nothing that I really have much to say about. But um, yeah, I'm trying to probably focus on... I'll probably play... Zao and uh, I'm still trying to finish mini shoot adventures, which I mentioned a couple weeks ago. I'm still really enjoying that. So, um, 
but yeah, not too much coming out this week, I don't think. Looks like the Braid Anniversary Edition, maybe, is the big thing. So I finally beat Braid. I should finally probably beat Brothers as well with that Definitive Edition that came in. Yeah, I've been meaning to play that as well, so... But we'll see. Maybe a megaton will drop this week. As far as we know, no Huck next week. Not 100% sure, but I think the plan is to review the Fallout TV show season one. Yeah, now I, there is a, a another indie showcase. It's the Xbox One. From what I saw, it looked like they're only covering a, a few games. So I don't even know if it'll be worth talking about. But yeah, You know I, what's going to be there and we're going to have to talk about it. What? Replaced. Oh, what replaced you think oh yeah i don't know it's see like i guess that's, it's possible i, I guess is that's the reason for doing the showcase well that would be exciting i saw the list of games and it seemed like all stuff we've seen fairly well, recently they, they released so. the list yeah but i mean there's always a chance that they throw a couple extra in but it didn't seem like a whole lot oh and that is tomorrow yeah should just wait and record it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Well, you can check us out on youtube.com forward slash game junk. Uh, Discord links are there. Thank you for listening or watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.